Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Andrew and welcome to uh, the AWS tutorial series on automation using OpsWorks. Um, so for those of you who don't know, OpsWorks is a really, really cool and really powerful tool um, by Amazon that's pretty much a wrapper um, around Chef. So you build your Chef scripts and your recipes and then you have Amazon execute them. And what's really cool is you can kind of create your own, uh, your own little environment. So they call those stacks. So you create a stack, and then within a stack, you have different layers. And you can think of these layers as, so let's think about just a standard LAMP stack. You know, you have Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So you could just consider those layers. So you have your normal stack, and then you have the layers, you know, uh, inside that. But what's really cool is within a stack, there's also the idea of deploying your own apps. So you can create an app, and let's say you have a website or an API, and you want to deploy a new change. Well, that change will be pulled down from Git, and there's ways to configure that on every single one of these layers and all of these servers. I want XYZ to happen as soon as that deployment happens. And I'll go over all that for you. Um, but before we begin, I just want to preface this by saying I've done a few things. Um, I've created a load balancer. I've created a security group that's just completely wide open, allow traffic inbound, outbound on everything. And I have created a pem file, an SSH key pair. Um, so I'm assuming you would already know how to do that if you're jumping into OpsWorks. Um, so let's go ahead and create our first stack. And we'll call this stack uh, automation using OpsWorks. We'll launch it in the default VPC, and the default subnet is fine. Um, I prefer to use Ubuntu 14. Um, just as a side note too, Amazon every six months uh, releases new versions of their Linux AMI and uh, of Ubuntu. So just a heads up, you'll always get a notification that says, hey, look, there's a new uh, operating system upgrade. Uh, make sure you go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to choose EBS backed. And the uh, default IAM roles and instance profiles are fine. With the SSH key pair, we'll use AWS tutorial series that I'd already pre-created. And the one thing we should pay attention to here is this advanced setting. So this advanced setting is really cool. Is uh, They allow us to use our own custom cookbooks. So OpsWorks by default provides a, a decent amount of cookbooks to set up your environment. Um, and they automatically run all the time. You can override them if you need to. Um, but they've got a lot of cool stuff already built into these layers. But sometimes they just don't have all the stuff that we want, and we want to be able to add more custom cookbooks. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to select that to yes. Um, in my GitHub account, I have uh, something that I set up for automation using OpsWorks. It's, it's really, really simple, uh, pretty much do-nothing recipes uh, that I'm just going to show you how it works. So we're going to go ahead, when we're adding the stack, we're going to select Git. We're going to give them my public repository. If you have an SSH key, make sure you put that in there if it's private. And then I always put this to no. Um, it's up to you really what you want to do if you want to use their security groups. I like to use my own just because a lot of the stuff I'm doing is kind of custom. So it's not your standard port 80, port 443. Um, sometimes I'm going over UDP, uh, weird TCP ports. So there's a lot of interesting things that I'm doing that I, I always select no just so I know I have some control over it. So we'll go ahead and our, add our first stack. So then you're always brought to this page. Um, and then basically from here, you can see all the layers that you have, all of the instances with, within those layers, the applications that you've created. And deployments is really cool. As you start working with OpsWorks, this goes through and shows you like, oh, you've made a deployment you know, two days ago across these servers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, monitoring is really detailed. It's really thorough. You can go through each layer. You can go through each server in a layer. You can see aggregates of them. And again, I'll, I'll show you that as I bring some instances up. And uh, resources, obviously, elastic IPs, volumes, things like that, uh, and just the, uh, the permissions on things. So let's go ahead and create our very first layer. And remember, a layer is, you know, just like if you're looking at a LAMP stack, Apache, MySQL, PHP, things like that. So for this, we're just going to use a PHP app server. Our security group's going to be wide open, and you can add more security groups if you want to. Um, the load balancer, like I said, I had already pre-created one, so we're going to use that. 
and by default every time you launch an instance into this layer it automatically puts it into the load balancer um, so we'll go ahead and add this layer okay so we can see we've got a layer we have zero instances in health so there's nothing's been launched uh, nothing's been set up so now it's time to kind of dive into this layer and, and build it how we want so the first things first is I'm going to jump over to the network tab uh, by default, uh, the public IP addresses is no, so we want to turn this to yes. Um, at least for this example anyways, if you're inside of a private subnet and you want to just only have access through a NAT router, you'd turn that to no, so you can kind of keep it internal only. But for this, we're going to use public IPs, yes. So we'll click save. And, uh, you know, for the heck of it, let's, uh, let's, let's put an EBS volume in there. So we'll just say mount testing. We'll give it a size of 25 gigabytes, give it SSD, and we've already set the security, we say it's wide open, and now the cool part here is the recipes section. Um, so within these recipes, like I said, Amazon has these pre-built recipes that you could dive in. All this is doing is linking to their GitHub account. So you can kind of dive in and see what all these are doing, and I, I won't do that here, I'll, I'll leave that to you to research, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add some custom recipes. Now, I'm not really going to go over how to uh, write these custom recipes. Um, I'll kind of leave that up to you to look at the chef documentation, which is, is very, very detailed and very easy to use. Um, and all I'm going to do here is just kind of show you how to link these up um, inside of your layer um, as it points to your GitHub. So I've created a couple recipes under this AUS folder. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail on any of them. Um, the only one I'm actually going to care about in this demo is the update, which pretty much runs apt-get update. Um, but I left the other ones in there so you can kind of see um, how Chef is formatted and, and maybe you'll you know, get some ideas off that. So all we're going to do for this is we're going to go very, very simple here. We're going to say AUS update. This is going to go to the AUS folder and run the update uh, recipe. We're going to run that on both setup and configure. So before we launch an instance, let me kind of talk about these here. So these custom steps, um, when, you, when setup happens is when a server is first booted. Um, it's going to run all sorts of OpsWorks things. And then if you have some extra additional things like configuration files, you want to run apt-get update, uh, things like that, you're going to run that in the setup script. Uh, configure. Um, configure runs every time a box is booted, but what's cool about this is let's say you have you have five servers currently inside of your layer and they're all in a load balancer and then you know you're going to get a lot of traffic today so you're going to bring five more up. So once you bring those next five up, those previous five are going to run this configure section. So typically I'll put an apt get update in here. Maybe there's a new configuration file that says, hey, I need to know about these other five servers that are coming up. Let's replace this configuration file. So things like that. Um, deploy happens anytime we run a deployment of an app. Under deploy um, or undeploy is when we make a deployment and we realize, so, so let's say it's a, it's a website and we realize that the website looks bad because we, we, made, a, we made an error. Um, we can undeploy that change and go back to the previous version that we were at because OpsWorks kind of keeps track of all those things. And then shutdown obviously is when we shut down the physical server. So cool, so we've got a couple different, uh, couple different custom cookbooks in there. So now the last thing I want to do is I want to add an app. So an app is, is exactly what it is. Um, it's an application. So it could be an API. It could be, uh, if you're using WordPress or Drupal, it could be the application code for that. Um, it could be a number of different things. But in this case, since we're using PHP, uh, we're going to want to make it a PHP app. Um, for this example, I have, uh, let me go back to my GitHub. I have my personal website, uh, andrewputch.com. I have this out on GitHub, so this is what I'm going to use to pull down. So we're going to create an app and we're just going to call this website. And then our repository URL is going to be uh, my GitHub account for my personal site. All this stuff you don't really have to worry about. You can use environment variables that 
Um, you can, when you, when you deploy an app, you can have your app look at those environment variables and do different things, add domains, enable SSL. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do um, to keep this safe and secure and keep it really customized to how you want it. Um, but for this example, uh, we're just going to use this. So we'll click Add an App. Cool. Now that our app is created, um, I think it's time to launch an instance. And I guess really before we launch an instance, I want to talk about two more other things, um, and that's time-based and load-based instances. So a lot of cases I know with, uh, with websites, um, you know, you get most of your traffic during, you know, business time. So, you know, between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., but, you know, in the evening hours, things kind of drop off. So what's really cool about OpsWorks is that you can say, hey, I've got a bunch of these recipes that I know build an exact server that I need. And I know during the times of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., I'm going to get 10 times more traffic than I am at 3 a.m. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to boot two or three more servers during that time and take them down. Vice versa, with load-based instances, you're like, hey, my traffic is pretty steady throughout the day all the time, but sometimes, depending on if there's an event happening or I'm promoting something, um, I know I'm going to get some crazy load, but I don't know when. So this is kind of like the, the surprise attack, you know, when my CPU goes over 80% or when the average load goes over 2, I want to boot some more servers. And you can say how many you want to boot and how many you want to take down and at what time. So it's pretty cool. But again, all that is just simple configurations. I'll let you uh, go ahead and take a look at that. So we're going to launch two instances. Both of these instances are going to get automatically placed within our load balancer. And then I'll just hit that load balancer and just show you that the site exists. The coolest part about OpsWorks um, and Chef is that pretty much once you set everything up, you almost never really have to log into terminal unless you know there's a pretty crazy problem and you need to look at logs of something in particular. But for the most part, you don't really need to log in. So I'm going to go ahead and add an instance. And Amazon already names these for you, so if I try to name this PHP app one, it would yell at me. Um, so I like to keep it like this. It's nice and neat and organized. Um, and then we're going to start all instances. Okay, so now that both of our servers are online, we're going to take a look at a couple things. We're going to look at the load balancer, make sure that the inst both of the instances have been registered and that the site comes up, that it looks identical to andrewpudge.com, which it should because it was just a direct uh, pull from GitHub. And then we're going to log into one of these servers, make sure that the volume that we said we wanted to mount is there. It was a 25 gig volume. And then we'll take a look at the monitoring tools to just kind of see what that looks like and how to drill into it. So I've got the load balancer all loaded here. Um, everything looks good. As I refresh, the page loads. Um, it looks identical to andrewputch.com, which is great. Um, if we jump over to the layers section, we can see that we have two servers that are in service. Um, so that's all good there. And I've logged in to the PHP app one server. And let's take a look at the mount directory. So we see we have a testing folder in there. And if we look here at the file system, we can see that we have mount testing. It's a 25 gig volume and it's automatically mounted onto uh, the server, which is great. So there's really not too much hard work we had to do there. And now the last thing I want to show you is the monitoring. So this is really cool. So it'll break out each one of our layers. Obviously, we just launched these servers, so you can see there's only a little bit of uh, information here to see. But this looks at our entire layer as a whole and gives us an average. But as soon as we click into one of these, we can see PHP app 1 and PHP app 2. And then we can kind of drill into each one of these as well. And we can look at the details of PHP app one. Again, the server was just launched. If this has been going for weeks, we would see this whole, uh, the whole thing filled up. But it's kind of cool. We can see, uh, see if there's any you know, weird trends. You know, maybe we're running out of memory somewhere, or the CPU is high during a specific time, and we need to load servers. So it's a good way to kind of figure out how your system works and when you're seeing the most, uh, the most traffic. And I think that concludes uh, the tutorial. So uh, please let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Um, leave a comment below. And if you could like and subscribe, that would be great. Thank you so much for watching.